Welcome to iLecture Online. And the new segment here that we're going to be talking about is magnetic fields generated or caused by moving charges and currents. We're going to start out by looking at a moving charge and trying to figure out the magnetic field nearby that moving charge. And in our example that we have here, we can see that we have an alpha particle moving to the right, and an alpha particle is basically the nucleus of a helium atom, which means it has two protons embedded within it. It's moving to the right at 5,000 meters per second, and they're asking to find the magnetic field at a point two centimeters away and directly above the moving alpha particle. So let's make a drawing of that, a sketch of that. So we have the alpha particle, which is basically two protons embedded with two neutrons in a nucleus, an atomic nucleus. And it's moving to the right at a velocity equal to 5,000 meters per second. And of course, since that's a vector quantity, we have to indicate the direction like that with the x unit vector. Now, we want to know the magnetic field direction and, uh, and the strength, the magnitude of that field, two centimeters directly above the alpha particle. So let's say right there at a distance of two centimeters above the particle. And of course, as the particle is moving, that position will move along with the particle. We want to know what the field is directly above the particle that's moving to the right. And so we can draw a unit vector to that position right there. So this is our uh, unit, not unit vector, but I should say um, uh, position vector. That's the vector that points from the particle to the position of interest. So it's called the position vector. And then the unit vector in that direction can be considered right here. The unit vector in that direction, we'll call that R with a little hat on it. Okay, now to find the magnetic field at that location, first for the direction, we can use a right hand rule. Take your thumb, point it in the direction of motion of the charged particle, and your, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. And what we mean with that is that the magnetic field is pointing all the way around, like a circular loop, around the moving particle. As the moving particle moves to the right, we have the magnetic field that's directed around the particle the way the fingers are curling. So looking from behind, it would be in a clockwise direction. So if the particle is moving this way, the field would have a clockwise direction. If the particle is moving this way, the, it has a clockwise direction looking from behind. Which means that above the particle, the B field, the magnetic field, would be pointing outside, uh, outside the board or out of the board. So we can indicate that by a little dot and a circle around it indicating that the B field is coming out of the board at that location. Below the particle, the magnetic field would be in the board. In front of the particle, the magnetic field would be down. Behind the particle, the magnetic field would be up. So you can see how it's directed in a circular loop around the moving particle. All right, so that gives us the direction. Now for the magnitude. Well, first of all, the equation that we need to use to find the magnetic field that is equal to mu sub naught divided by four pi times the size of the charge of the particle, times the cross product of the particle's velocity, v, crossed with the unit vector in the direction of the point of interest, and divided by the magnitude of the position vector squared. Now, since we're only interested in the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field, we could then say that the magnitude of that is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the charge, q, and V cross R can be written in terms of magnitude as the magnitude of V times the magnitude of the unit vector, which is 1, times the sine of the angle between the two vectors, and then divide by R squared. Now notice that the position of the point of interest and the motion of the particle, the, the angle between them theta is equal to 90 degrees. And of course, the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So in this case, we have the maximum magnetic field directly to the side. And as the position vector changes direction and the angle becomes smaller, the magnitude of the magnetic field will become weaker. All right, plugging in the numbers that we have, mu sub naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter per amp. We multiply the times the charge of the nucleus, and that would be 2 times the charge of a single proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And uh, the velocity v, which is 5,000 meters per second. And uh, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. And divide the whole thing by, we still have a 4 pi in the denominator. And then we have the distance squared. The distance would be 2 centimeters 
So that would be 0 0.2 meters, and we have to square that. And now we're ready with a calculator to figure out what that is equal to. All right, maybe before we do that, we can see here that the 4 pi here cancels out those 4 pi. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, so now with my calculator, let me figure out what this is equal to. 1 e to the 7 minus times 2 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus times 5,000 equals, and divide that by 0 0.02 squared equals, and we come out to 4 times 10 to the minus 19 teslas. And just to make sure that we have our units correct, let's see what the units are. Now here, this is coulombs, meters a second, so putting the units to the right here, we have teslas times meters divided by amps. We multiply that times coulombs, multiply that times meters per second, and then divide by meters squared. Okay, so first of all, we have a meters times the meters in the numerator and the meters squared in the denominator, so that cancels out. All right, now next, an amp is a coulomb per second, so we can replace this by a coulomb per second, and then notice that we have a coulomb in the numerator and a coulomb in the denominator, that will cancel, and then notice that we have a second in the denominator and a one over second in the denominator, that will cancel as well, and so we're left with Teslas, so our answer here is correct. And quickly recapping, we have a particle moving to the right, it has two positive charges, two protons. To find the direction of the magnetic field that it causes, you use your right hand, point your thumb in the direction of motion, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field coming out of the board. Then to find the magnitude of that, we use this equation that tells us the, uh, the magnetic field as a result of a moving charge. Here's our constant, here's the charge, twice the charge of a single proton, the velocity, and then the length of the unit vector, which is 1, and then times the sine of the angle between them, which in this case, 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees is 1, and then divide by 4 pi, and divide by the distance, and realizing here, of course, that 2 centimeters is actually 0 0.02 meters, and that's, um, you got to be careful, I put the correct value in my calculator, but I didn't write the correct value here on the board, and, um, that will then give us the answer right there. Okay, that's how you do that.